We have ourselves another basket case on our hands. Oh, Tulumnia Pink Grisht. Happy days because she's growing a new growth that is quetched up right underneath the previous growth that grew through the basket, which I don't mind that at all, but the growth that's coming now, that's just a little bit too much of a tight squeeze for my liking. So I've been through my toolbox because my first pliers, they can't get through this sturdy wire, but I found this tiny little wire cutter and you cannot believe it, it is going through this really tough wire that my bigger ones can't handle. It's like butter. So you see, I've tested it out. And the plan being to cut all along the rim and just lift this part up and then get the tolumnia out. It's good to have you here. Thank you so much for taking the time to click on the video. Now, I was just praising how these pliers get through so easily. And are you kidding me? Ah, with a little bit of a twist. <laughs> okay, that wasn't the plan, but all right. I may need to take a break because I do have issues with my carpal tunnel on both wrists. And this is quite the chore. Well, if you're going to come off like that, maybe I don't have to cut. Maybe I can just pry them off at the joints up there. Huh. I thought this was going to be like a doddle. <laughs> the first three were demonstration. Okay. Oh dear. Now these are thicker, so I'm not even going to bother. There we go. If you're upset about the basket, yes, so am I. But I would much rather have the orchid than hoping for the best. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending how you want to see it, but in this case, fortunately, I do have some spare empty baskets. <laughs> yes, some occupants had disappeared in the meantime. Oh well, at least this one has a basket and I don't have to put it into semi-hydro. That's a good thing. This is the precarious part. This is the growth that has the new growth underneath it. Leaves me with this one right here. That side was the easiest. <laughs> My test side was the easiest. Okay. Now, I still have to concern myself with the edges here. Oh, wonderful. There we go. At least we've exposed her enough to hopefully maneuver her out. This is why lava rock really bothers me. The roots love it, but when it comes to repotting or anything of the sorts, it's a lot of damage. And I've got another growth growing nicely in the middle. And you know, that's, that's awesome. But we can't predict what our orchids do when it comes to where they produce their growth. Do you see that growth? That was the culprit. And that one is so nicely positioned in the middle. Oh well. Now, gotten this far. I have a little microfiber at the base just because of added humidity for the hot summer months. It helps a lot just to keep that from drying out too quickly. And here is a basket I prepared earlier. The question is, will I be able to get my tolumnia inside? Seeing as it is attached to the old microfiber, I won't be needing the new one. And let the fiddle begin. We did this last summer. At least this time I don't have spikes to contend with.
And now I just want to have her positioned a little bit better. It's me just being fussy now because in the basket is all I wanted. And now I'm feeling brave. I'm feeling emboldened by the fact that sliding her into the basket was so easy. I'd like to get a better position. Because this is the back. I doubt that the back is ever going to produce another growth. You never know. And I'm just going to take the old lava rock and fill her out and secure her into place. That'll work. Yeah, that'll work. That was quicker than I expected. Yay. I have one more orchid I'd like to put into lava rock. Even though that orchid is not growing new roots, it is time to put that one into lava rock and then hopefully the season will be better. So while I go and get her, would you please give this video a like in the meantime and a subscribe would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Look at this. Isn't this cool? Let me tell you something. We have a little tuck shop around the corner. It is fantastic. And it has gotten even better because I've been looking at all their Tupperwares and I asked them, what do you do with your Tupperwares? And they said, well, we throw them away. Now, no, 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 no. Save me every single Tupperware that you have, every kind of container, you know, also with the lids on them. I said, I can use that for my orchids. And he was so, so happy. So now every once in a while, I get a whole load of perfectly fine Tupperware that used to store candy. And now they are the containers for my orchid candy, <laughs> which is media. It's fantastic. I love it. Just wanted to share that with you. All right. So I have large lava rock on the right. I have medium sized or large lava rock as well here on the left. We'll see. But what we need in the middle is our orchid. This is Tetratonia Dark Prince. Hasn't done well for me in Lekka and self-watering in the past four years. And I said the next time I'm going to touch this orchid, I'm putting her into lava rock. Has a very similar growth habit to a Tolumnia, but there is a pseudobulb at the base that we can actually determine. Tolumnias, of course, have pseudobulbs as well, but they're so tiny we can't see them. But this one has thing is that it has chunky roots like cattleyas. So in order for this orchid to hopefully come onto her own, now that I have gotten the persistent scale gone, she's been fine for almost a year and a half. We're going to put her into self-watering and lava rock. First of all, let's see what we've got to work with. Lots of pieces in this pot. But if there are any viable roots, I have no idea. She was a big mess the last time I potted her up and oh, it looks like we have viable roots. That is fantastic. Also looks like we have dead roots. You see with my dry climate, I have to resort to microfiber as well, just to keep the base from drying out too much. But we're going to have to do a major cleanup on this orchid again. I like the look of this though. This is giving me hope. This is the best I've ever seen her. So thankfully with the scale issues under control, we could get ourselves some roots. Now you may think, oh bummer, it seems to be working. I bet she's regretting having disturbed the orchid before the roots were growing. Yes, I am. But I, w I wanted to make sure that I got ahead of the game and I hope I didn't shoot myself in the foot by doing this. But what we're not going to do is compromise this root system too much. We're going to make sure we keep it nice and wet. It's kind of a warmish, breezy day today. Sorry about any background noise. It's a warmish, breezy day today. And a lot of people are outside enjoying, of course, the beautiful, beautiful day climate at the moment much needed anyway so you see this one has a viable root that grew into the next piece but it's a sorry little piece so we're gonna have to be very mindful of that and see if we can't untangle 
that one root that is doing well. Doesn't look like it. It looks dead, but it's not. It, it, it's feeling firm. Ooh, and look at that. Look at the branching. So, oh yes, we desperately need this root. Sorry for that gate. I'm sorry. While I'm doing this, it's hard to stop, pause, and wait. Sorry about that. But look, even though it looks nasty at the top here, it is a branching root system. So let me get my sprayer and make sure that we keep these roots nice and damp while we get to the next step. Yes, I regret going into her. No, I don't because now I have hope. She's going to do much better in lava rock. Now that I see that this has worked to a degree, but it's really, really tedious and I don't want to keep going along these lines. Shiny pseudobulb, look at that. Isn't that just adorable? I really want this orchid to come onto her own. New growth. So we're gonna be working with that. This is a nice piece here. It doesn't look like it, but <laughs> to me, it is a nice piece. <laughs> so you gotta be careful with this one, seeing as it only has one root that is extending beautifully. And the rest, not so much. Not going to be too positive about this one right here because it has the single root that is cracked, that is branching, that is functioning at the base of the root structure, but it also has a problem because now that I'm changing the media, I think maybe I'm gonna lose this piece. We'll have to wait and see. There we go. I'm gonna get rid of this mess. We're gonna potter up. Hey, hey, you know what? Because the roots were doing so well with small leka, I have changed my mind. I'm going on to small lava rock. I thought I was going to go with large lava rock, but that's not happening. So here's another container that used to have chuches in it, as we call it in Spain, chuches. So I'm just preparing my pot with my self-watering microfibers that are just perfect. I bought two mops four years ago <laughs> and these are the strands from the mops. Cheap microfiber, but effective. Now, the ideal part, coincidentally, the Tetratonia Dark Prince pot was also broken. So I have a 15 centimeter pot here, same size as before. Make sure we don't get ahead of ourselves. Get those strands in there nice. Not that anybody's gonna see that, but I do want to create a loop. We're gonna fill it with water because this is gonna be a little bit of a fiddle because of the length of the roots and all that fun stuff. So fill her up with water. We don't wanna be bashing that tender of a layman. And I'm gonna crock with large lava rock. Just a little bit, because those roots are very, very long. So I'm just gonna give a little bit of a base there. We have to get the main star attractions and bring them back into the picture here and get them in before we can do any filling up. I just have to be, have everything in position. <laughs> Where is my daughter? I need my daughter. 
this would be a good time for her to say hey <laughs> and i'm like oh hey come on over i need you all right right-handed so we need the media on the right side yes everything everything you know step by step now make sure that i don't block the view with my arms so we have a direction of growth i know it doesn't look like it but we do that's here that's that one we have a direction of growth with this little one so we'll get that in you see, I didn't need to put much media down at the base because the roots are that long. See that we get the bases all the same. And the third piece also, of course, has its direction of growth. And hopefully the roots will forgive me. Hopefully. So I like them like that. And now we fill up a little bit more water, actually, because that one root on the top there, but with a lecker bead, it's clinging on to right there. Don't want that to get too bashed. So now we're going to put in the smaller lava rock. Not tiny, tiny, not small, small. Let's say medium, small lava rock, but not the large that I had intended. Change of plans. I want the roots to have the same kind of moisture around them as they had before. I don't want to go dry now because that would definitely cause them to fail. We can't have anything failing here. There is still some work to be done right in the center there. Let me get you down. The reason being there was some really nice roots there. And they have never been exposed. They were in the lecker. So making sure that they have the similar kind of wet environment around them as they had before. Just plain RO water for the time being because she's not in active growth. Ooh, fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. Alrighty. Oh my goodness. That was unexpected. I'm feeling positive. Hope that you're going to stick around to follow the journey of my Tetradonia Dark Prints. For the year of 2023, I am hoping that she will come unto her own. And I've said that three times now. Anyway, so good to have had you here. Thank you so very much for watching. Still one little tiny detail to do, and that is hang up my Tolumnia. Have a fabulous day on that one condition, though. Please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.